tēnā koutou katoa, tuatahi me mihi atu a hau ki te kaupapa, ara ko te belonging, um, belonging and feeling a sense of belonging is who I am as um, a Māori. Um, so when I see that our Māori and our Pacific Island tamariki um, are the ones who tend to be found out of class on hikoi or late to class, it, it makes me wonder why. And um, what is it that draws them out of class? What is it that is more important than their learning? Um, so what is, what is the missing link? Why is the learning not enough to have them turn up to class early and not want to leave it at all? <laughs> I mean, is it the content? Is it the delivery? Is it the teacher? Layana, she, what she did is she um, created a core fi fi pattern um, for our school, and she's got a whole story around why it's been designed like it is. Uh, initially, it was for the um, the uniform for the kapahaka uniform, but it's gone. Bigger. It's become bigger than that. It's um, it's been reproduced onto large boards that will appear, eventually appear throughout our school. Um, the library have also um, asked for it to be shown. Uh, they want to have um, it shown on their the sides of their bookcases, um, and. Eventually, will be a a, um, a frosting put on a window, and when I asked, or when I when I um, asked um, Leanna how she felt about that, she was just like amazed. She she sees it as a legacy that she's going to leave behind, and yes, yeah, just just has her be. Um, be at one with with the school. Um, I was interested in knowing whether um, the kids thought it would be a good idea to have a um, hub with a co-papa Maori focus, and that would be a hub that would reflect Maori culture and 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 its values, and um, give them an opportunity to learn and experience and strengthen their knowledge of um, Maori culture and language, and also allow them. A f to feel, you know, a, a safe place um, to f to be who they are, and it would also be a hub that would be open to all students who wish to be a part of of it. The students, um, and there was an overwhelming there was overwhelming support for the idea. They all thought it was a fantastic idea. Some of them said things like. Um, I feel we need more culture in the school, so it would be um, a way to enable that to happen. Um, it would be good, however, if we had a solid point where we could only focus on Māori culture. Um, it, I, I like the sense of connecting with other Māori. What next, eh? <laughs> what could it look like? <laughs> A Fano Hub. Quarry was starting in a new school, and I had been so much in in many schools that I have been in throughout the world has always been so teacher driven and so focused on the teacher standing there and giving all the information. So I found this a little bit of a challenge where you suddenly had to take away that control, the 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 dominant role of a teacher, and let it be more open with the students and the inquiry, the inquiry learning basically allows for that, allows students to take more ownership of the, their own learning and of course they are the main stakeholders in their own education as well. I started off by thinking that I wanted to build relationships with the new school, wanted me to feel a sense of belonging as well as my students to feel a sense of belonging in the classroom. Of course, I wanted students to feel more inclusive, but me, myself, I wanted to be included as well. 
So I started off with scaffolding tasks and trying to have the conversations, making a greater effort to include the students in the conversations within the classroom, hoping that that would motivate them to take care of their own learning by creating their own self-worth as well. I then realized that if I had more student voice, I was allowing them to express their opinions in small group forums, and this seemed to have worked really, really well. I've had students who wanted to be isolated because they didn't want to share, but if they were one-on-one -on -one or if they had their best friend with them or someone with them, they were comfortable to talk about what they were doing. And of course, that helped with their learning because they were comfortable to talk to me then about what motivated them to learn and to ensure that their tasks were done on time as well. And I do understand that the curriculum is, de is definite. It is set in a lot of ways. But if we make different and interesting ways for students, different ways to teach it, to deliver it uh, with the partnership with students and creating that student voice allowed for different forums, whether they worked on their own on their assessments or projects, or they sat and discussed it in small groups, or together we watched um, documentaries or little film clips to help to enhance the learning as well. For this spiral of inquiry, I chose to do belonging. This is something that's um, perhaps quite personal for me because um, I actually started secondary school at the age of 11. This is what you do in England. And I found that time quite difficult. It was quite challenging um, mentally and emotionally. So um, this was something that was quite meaningful for me. Um, I started this project by gaining some student voice about how they feel they belong at our school and what things would they change or improve to make them feel like they belonged even more. I started with my hub, but I was quite concerned that my questions were driving their answers. Um, so this is something that I actually embedded into our to a kind of Tainer workshop slideshows. So um, this was a way to gather student voice um, amongst all our project groups around how they would create a welcoming environment. And um, it also allowed the students to be quite mindful about how to accommodate for the year eights that were going to visit us during this time. So the common things I got back from um, what the students were saying were things like knowing names, knowing faces, being in a familiar environment or recognizing yourself within that environment and knowing that it was okay to be yourself. So those were really common themes. Um, knowing this with the learners and sharing this information meant that they could go away and create really fun websites that had people's faces and allowed the visitors to get to know their names and feel really comfortable with what they're signing up for. Um, one thing that really, really surprised me was um, I noticed that quite a few students um, were, they seemed a bit distant and maybe a bit ap apathetic towards um, inviting the students in. And when I sat down and spoke to them, I realized, or they actually shared with me the fact that they were quite nervous about meeting the year eights, which I did find surprising. Um, but it was quite good to remind myself, obviously, not to judge a book by its cover and realize that um, students that perhaps aren't so positive are you know there are some things that tend to underline that so that's really good to remind myself of um I also realized from that experience that um the tour container workshops not only provided a way to build those connections between the primary school and secondary school and try and to kind of make that transition really smooth um, but it also allowed us to observe our current students. Um, one thing I found in my research was um, a lot of schools and institutes dedicate the first day or the first week to um, welcoming the, the new students, um, but there's not often a lot of follow-up. And it is something to bear in mind that you should keep touching base throughout the year. Um, I think that this was a really, really good opportunity to do that and um, we can affirm what's going well, but we can also see um, if there are students that do need some more support throughout their year nine, year 10 experience. What did I find out? I, I found out that my, uh, in quotations, cultural belonging was very narrow, my understanding of the word. Um, I was very much looking through the lens and from the viewpoint that this was a place of birth, um, a place in which you connected with your culture, your place. 
and through exploring and and having um, the opportunity to implement ideas, uh, I've definitely broadened broadened rather that that thinking. Um, I always knew that there was more to this, but I never associated the understanding, um, my understanding with the term cultural belonging. I always bracketed that in relationships. So um, I found out just how valuable the relationship building is in creating a strong sense of cultural belonging in your space. Um, students are the ones who decide to open up the door for you to come in when it comes to their cultural belonging and how they're feeling. And, and you need to work hard as a teacher to be able to be given that opportunity. Um, and I think that this year, that's been at the forefront for me. And it's been really obvious um, that the efforts that I've put in have, have been rewarded through some of the amazing relationships that I have created. Um, how has what you find out changed your teaching? Well, Looking into that cultural belonging is more than just a place of birth or, or where your family's from. Um, and looking at how individual it is, how it's your thoughts, your feelings, your sense of self, your everyday life, your exposure to situations. Um, I've come across some situations in drama, especially where students have felt safe and they've wanted to explore their cultural belonging and who they are. Um, but unfortunately, I am, haven't been able to let them fully let go because some of the content that they want to explore for them isn't safe for others. Um, and so I'm now in a predicament where I'm needing to work out how I can have a strong, developed, real, honest, cultural belonging in my class, but keep my environment safe. Um, and I guess I will continue to pour energy into building strong relationships. Um, as a teacher, you can get frustrated at times, but I think the turning up to sports on the weekends and the um, after-school activities, um, and I think the relationships that you build in and out of your classroom and showing students that you believe in them, you care, and that, that you think that they're going to be a success is, um, is vital to their cultural belonging. They don't feel liked when it came to belonging in a class, that they think that the teachers don't like them. I found that a little bit sad. I made it anonymous so I wasn't talking about me, but I don't, I'm hoping it wasn't me. <laughs> I really hope it wasn't me. But um, one of the positives were that they felt liked by the teacher. So I think there are a couple of students in our school that don't necessarily feel like they're being liked by the students or the teachers, and that might be one of the reasons they're not coming to class. But when I did ask about what would make them come to class more, it was that they'd feel supported by the teacher and also a little bit off topic, but one of the students I've been talking to recently, his attendance is high. He comes to class on time, but often wanders outside of class. And the student wasn't initially part of my inquiry, but ended up being part of it because we've come up with steps to see how we can try and manage that. So the majority of the reasons he was leaving class wasn't actually because of the class itself, and it was also with another student as well, but it was the drama that was going on in the background for what was happening outside of the classroom. And often it could be triggered by another student that was involved in that outside of the classroom being in that same class, or that they just couldn't focus because they were in a bad mood. So I try and, move, like, if I know it wasn't related to another student, I might move them into a breakout space where I can still see them because they often do ask if they can leave the student services. And I know that is a supportive environment, but I also want to be able to monitor them a little bit more. So they're still in the class. So they still have that sense of belonging that I don't want to just ask them to leave. But they still could have their own space. And another one for this particular male student was that we've come up with a thing where if I see that he's upset and moody, that I'd ask him to take a walk, because that's how he usually calms himself down. 
And he also knows, because I'd always check with him at the beginning of the walk, that would you like to go for a walk? And what is my rule about the walk? And he knows that my rule is that he'll go for a walk to calm himself down. But I do expect him to be back in class in five minutes, just so I can check up on him again. And it might be that he needs to go for another walk, but I do expect him to be back with me so I can make sure that he's okay and that I can try and catch him up on the work as opposed to being gone for a long time. So I think it's also about making individualized plans depending on the reason for why they're not coming to class. Right at the start where um, we were looking at what rupu we were going to go into for our spirals, um, I had a, a real want to look at well-being and holder and, and how that can impact on Māori achieving success as Māori. Um, and as I moved into the DP role, it's become a how can I help to lead Māori achieving success as Māori within the school and what systems do I need to um, put in place that will support um, connections for our whānau and our ākonga um, that also align to culturally sustaining pedagogy change? Um, My hunch at the start of this was that... Um, that we as a school, a lot of our principles and practices have been based on Māori achieving success as Māori and culturally sustaining pedagogy and how we set up our school with our hubs, with our small group of learners, with our Fano connections, um, with our student voice and everything that we do. Um, I think we have tried to set it up, but explicitly linking with Māori Fano away from everyone doing it en masse hasn't really occurred so much. So um, Claire had already got underway, the app working with Roz and Fai Leone, and we made sure that when we launched that, that we follow protocol and tikanga, um, invited Fano, and that started some connections right from that. Um, connecting in with Tsukawara on Maki at the um, app launch, um, also talking to them there in the middle of that process right now where they're trying to develop their plan and how they might um, connect with schools around that. So we've we've offered to connect in there as well, so it would be amazing if we could work with them. Um, from there, we've looked to have um, a Māori whānau meeting, which we're going to have termly, um, and we invited the Māori okonga and their families from the primary school as well so that we have that connection with the Hobsonville Point Primary coming through, um, as well as that looking to develop a student agency rōpū so that it's not us doing things to students but doing things with students and allowing them to drive really important things in the school like um, developing tikanga and today use across the school, across the kura, without it just being kapahaka that's called on to do things. How can we get that happening more across the board? Um, the whānau evening went really well. We explored what is success and what is aspirations for the tamariki and mokupuna. Um, and it was a really cool evening where we linked in with them in terms of whenua and place and where they were from. Um, so again, things that we know are culturally sustaining practices, we look to put in place place with the whānau, we shed kai, um, we made sure we karakia, all those things that we know is good tikanga, we're making sure that we have those at those events. With the student agency rōpū, my, um, the concerns I have is that I'm really trying to get the kids on board. Um, there's about 48 students that I'd been targeting, I saw them all individually, there were several emails, I put on kai but I struggled to get a massive amount there. Um, I want more voice from them and um, I want them to drive what we might do in terms of ch um, change, so getting people on board more next year, really keen to get some more staff involved and I know there's people interested in that so I'll be coming short shoulder tapping and um, the other thing is that I'm very aware of the continuum of the akonga and their, um, what they know themselves of them being Māori so I don't want it to be intimidating for them and there was an understanding in all the communication that they didn't have to know about their whakapapa, um, they didn't have to know about their connections, that it would be something that we'd explore together and something that we'd lead um, in the school going forward. So that's aspirations, but definitely needs some more work next year. So I look forward to anyone who wants to help support that.